Who's at the door? <laughs> try it, try it again. There you go. Someone comes knocking at the door. The, the, who is it? Who, hopefully, if it's like, oh, it's the Harneys. It's Kevin and Sherry. would be like, oh, great, open the door. Not like, hide. Uh, but, it's, you know, but it depends on who's showing up, who's arriving. Well, 2,000 years ago, God Almighty came knocking on the door of our world. Jesus showed up. God with us, Emmanuel. When Jesus showed up, God moved into our world. When a person today puts their faith in Jesus, God moves into your life. And when you walk out into the world and you've received Jesus, he lives in you, everywhere you go, God arrives. He shows up with you. That's just how it works. Jesus didn't just arrive, he's still arriving. When Jesus arrived, holiness came into the world. The holiness of heaven came into our broken, mixed up world. But when you become a follower of Jesus, the holiness of heaven moves into you and you're washed clean. All your sins are washed away. And if that happens and Jesus lives in you, then when you walk into the world, you bring a different perspective. You bring a holiness to our world. It sometimes doesn't even comprehend what's going on, but we bring holiness into the world. When Jesus arrived 2,000 years ago, truth came. Not subjective truth, not truth by vote or consensus, not, I feel like it's true, I guess it's true to me. No, no, the truth showed up. And when you become a follower of Jesus, the truth moves into you. And you got to grapple with that truth. And then when you know Jesus and he lives in you, when you walk into the world, you walk in his truth and you bring his truth. And the same way, when Jesus showed up in this world, life came into our world. Life showed up. The life of God, the life of the world, the life of Jesus. And when all of us, when all of us think about life, if I were to tell you, okay, right now, just you know, kind of in your mind, close your eyes or focus on it, and when you think of life, what pictures come to your mind? I mean, what images, life, what pictures come to your mind? It's different for each person. Now, we can, we can find out what comes to the mind of our world as a whole, because if you pull up Google Images and you put in life, they have an algorithm that will continue to choose the pictures that are most clicked on and bring them to the top. So whatever's at the top is what most resonates with people when they think about life. So a couple weeks ago, here's some of the images that would have come up on Google, and it changes continually, depending on what people are thinking about what they're clicking on, right? But here's one of the images that would have come up a couple weeks ago. It's beautiful. A flower, plant life. A little bee, insect, like, oh, that life. Yeah, that makes sense. Another picture that would have popped up a couple weeks ago is a graduation ceremony. Somebody's saying, I'm free, I'm done, I'm out of here, life. You know, they're starting a new chapter of their life. This one, I don't know why it came up, but it's, people like it. I don't know if this is Photoshopped or real, but it's kind of cute. So look, I don't know who's more concerned, the cat or the butterfly, but, uh, but you know, life. There's a beauty to that. Some people will come to their minds would be like a celebration, a party, a woo kind of a thing. It's that, that image of just being together with people and celebrating with all the, you know, probably people with all the lockdowns and stuff to be together, to share life. Or, or happy new year. You know, new year's fireworks. And they sense, okay, it's a new year, a new beginning. I can start fresh. A new beginning, a new lease on life. Those are things that kind of come through the, the lens of Google. Now, if I was to say to you, what pictures come to your mind? I can't tell, I don't know what that is, but I can tell you what comes to my mind. If you say, Kevin, when you think of life, what kind of pictures come to your mind? One of the first things that comes to my mind is this, water, the ocean. Grew up in Huntington Beach. I love the ocean. I love water. Sherry and I had a chance just before all the global lockdowns a couple years ago to actually dive the Great Barrier Reef in, uh, off of Australia. You want to see life under the water. I mean, here's, here's the water. There's, you see nothing top of the water. You go underneath and you go, man, it's stunning, right? And, and I actually... Every place that we do ministry, we have a chance to do ministry in different parts of the world. Every, country, every part of the world we go to, I end up finding a favorite place, and it's always along the water. Australia, Malulaba, little surf town along the coast. New Zealand, Taronga, surf town along the coast. Here, Monterey, along the coast, where I grew up in Huntington Beach. Even in, even in Central America, there's a place called the Punta Roca Surf Motel, right on the water, best waves in Central America. I love, so that, that to me, to be near the ocean it, it brings life. Sharing, being around a table, sharing a meal with friends. And that's life. 
being with people that being with people that, that you love and just being with being with people and celebrating life, man, that's amazing. Good food. Good food brings life. So look at look at this picture. Now wait a minute, that's my you just slipped into my wife's brain. <laughs> try try another picture. There we go. Uh, some jalapeno, some fresh avocado, life, right? Good, good food. Uh, for, for me, if you could get me alone on a mountain after fresh snow with my Burton Flow snowboard, I'm almost 60, but that is still life for me, is to be out on the snow. It, it, it brings me life. You want to know a picture of life for me? I won't show it on the screen. I'll go like this. Click right there. Life, the body of Christ. People online, I got a red light on the camera. That's you, click, right there. Being together with God's people, worshiping Jesus. That's life. All these are gifts from God. Family, you know, when Sherry and I started out when we first got married, it was the two of us. And then God gave us three boys, and then three daughter-in-laws, and then four grandkids, and then four grand dogs. I hear that's what they're called these days. Uh, And so, you know, that's that's what happened with, it was just the two of us, and then life, right? Um, I don't know what your pictures are, but if you get pictures of life in your heart and your mind, you're you're getting a picture of the gift of Jesus. All the good gifts are given from Jesus. And if you could look in the heart of God, the pictures that would come to God's heart, here's one of them. Life, the manger. When Emmanuel, God with us, came among us. When Jesus came, the divine one, enfleshed, born in a manger in Bethlehem over 2,000 years ago, life came into the world. In the heart of God, you want a picture of life? It's an empty tomb. Because Jesus, who came for us, hung on the cross and took our sins and paid the price for our sins, he gave his life for our lives. And he died. They buried him in the tomb for three days. And after three days, he rose again. And he conquered the the power of sin and death and hell and the grave. And he said, life, I have victory. That's what Jesus brings. Jesus brings life. And so, Lord Jesus, this is our prayer tonight. As we're gathered together here this Christmas Eve, will you help us understand your life? For those of us that know you, bring to our hearts and our minds a richer, more powerful, more beautiful understanding of the life you have given to us and the life you continue to give to us and the life you have promised forevermore. And Lord, for anyone who has not yet come to know you, Jesus, and put their faith in you, may this be the day. May their Christmas gift be this year that they come to know the life that's found in you, Jesus, alone. Meet with us in this time. We pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. When Jesus arrived, life showed up. In that manger, when God came into human history, life showed up. The arrival is the incarnation. Jesus was incarnate. He came among us. And when Jesus came to our world, he entered the dominion of death, and he brought life. He entered the dominion of death, and he brought his life. To this world. Listen to these words from John chapter 1. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to John chapter 1. We're going to look at three passages, all from the Gospel of John. And if you have your Bible, or your iPad, or your iPhone, and you want to pick up a, your Bible app, if you're at home, you want to, but, or I'll have it on the screens as well. But listen to these words about life that Jesus brought into the world. In the beginning was the Word, and that word means Jesus, the Logos, Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's Emmanuel, God with us. He he was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made, and without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all people, of all mankind. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And then if you jump down to verse 12, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he, Jesus, gave the right to become children of God, Children born not of natural descent or of human decision or of a husband's will, but born of God. That's new life, born of God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. When Jesus was born 2,000 years ago, life entered this world. Life came into a dark, broken world filled with death and breathed something new. So Jesus, when we see him as the life, we understand that Jesus is, is beyond life. 
right? Jesus is, Jesus is beyond life. We, we look at our lives and we have a starting point. And if you're a Christian, you begin and you have a, you're going to be forever with Jesus. But Jesus is from now forever, but Jesus is from now backwards forever. Jesus is eternal. He's the maker of life. He's the sustainer of life. He's the giver of life, but he's beyond life. Only the one who's beyond life can give life and can bring life, and that's Jesus. Jesus is the creator of life. John says, all things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that has been made. Think about that. Everything was made through him, through Jesus. And without Jesus, nothing was made that's been made. Everything you see that's been created, created by the power of Jesus, by the hand of Jesus. You stand in a redwood forest. We have redwood forests around here. It's a beautiful part of the world. And you look up at a tree and the intricacy and the beauty and you go, thank you, Jesus. He, he made that. A dolphin. You look at a dolphin and you go, Jesus, thank you. You made that. I have an affinity for dolphins because when I was a kid, there was a TV show called Flipper. If you just chuckled, you remember. And you also dated yourself. Um, <laughs> And I love Flipper because it was this, this, this kid who had this pet dolphin, because people have pet dolphins, and, um, but it was like it lived in the water and the ocean, not like in a little pool. It was, you know, but like Flipper would come and Flipper would say to this little kid, he would say, and you have to listen closely, he'd say, like, eh, 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 eh. And he'd go, what, Billy's in trouble? He's, he's trapped inside of a boat? Eh, eh, It was kind of like that. And I, was, I was thought, that's amazing. He could understand what the dolphin's saying. So then I, I became a fan of the dolphins, the, the Miami dolphins years ago because Flipper, right? But the beauty of sea creatures, thank you, Jesus. He made it all. Fresh fruit, thank you, Jesus. Sea otters, thank you, Jesus. People. Do you know that when God was creating, as Jesus spoke, as the word spoke, all things into existence, the pinnacle, the top of all he made was people? Now, we, we live in a contentious, polarized, fighting time in the world. And people are fighting over just you name it. And yet, we need to remember that Jesus, the maker of all things, made the people around you, even the ones you disagree with on some things. His creation, his people. Every person is so precious that Jesus died on a cross for their sins to show love to them, each person. That's the heart of Jesus. When you think about all the things he made, when you think about life, don't forget people and don't forget yourself. Because he made you, and he takes delight in you, and he loves you. Jesus is the creator of life. And then Jesus brings light to life. In him was life, and that life was the light of man, of all humanity. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not consumed it, has not overcome it, has not won victory over it. Jesus brings life and light. That means every time you have a thought go through your mind, you know, when, you know the idea that light, the light bulb came on? Some new creative thought. Some brilliant thought, some idea. Like, bing, the light goes, Jesus is present in illumination. In those times where you're struggling and you can't see what's next and you're, and you're saying, I don't know what's coming next. Whether you're a Christian or not, you're just going, I don't know what's next. I feel like I'm in darkness. And then there's a light on the path and shows the way Jesus is present. When there is light, Jesus is near because he brings light to life. That's the heart of Jesus. He wants to illuminate your life. If you know him, you know what I'm talking about because you know he guides your path. And even times where it's tricky, sometimes all God shows you is like that much ahead for the next step, but it's still light for the path. When we think about light in our culture, we think about spotlights and headlights. In the ancient world, when they talked about light, they would think about a candle that showed you about two steps ahead. But he'll always give you light for the next step. This Jesus is beyond life. This, this Jesus brings light to life. And so Jesus who came, who walked among us 2,000 years ago, he brought life to the world. But now, today, he brings life to our lives. If you're a Christian, if you're, whether you're online or on campus here, if you have come to the cross and you receive the forgiveness of Jesus, you've accepted his love and his grace, and you've taken his hand, and you're walking with Jesus the best you can, you're a Christian, his life is in you, and it will never leave you. If you're not yet a Christian, you're saying, well, I'm here at church or I'm at home watching with some family or friends and, you know, I, but I'm not sure how all this stuff works. I will tell you, Jesus is ready and waiting. He longs to bring life to your life. See, if you're breathing right now, if you're alive today, you already have the life Jesus is. He's, he breathed life at you. He gave you physical life, but there's more life he wants to give. 
And so we understand this, that in the arrival of Jesus, there's this inspiration that changes our lives when we recognize that Jesus is here with us, and he's in us when we put our faith in him, and he offers this. He offers life, life, and life. And also the bonus life you already have. Pretty good, huh? So Jesus gives you your life, breathes life into you, but once you're alive physically, he offers you life, life, and life. What are you talking about? Well, look with me at John chapter 10. In John chapter 10, verse 7, we read this. Therefore, Jesus said again, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. I'm the gate that gets you in where you need to go. He's the good shepherd, right? All who have come before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. And then Jesus says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He's talking about salvation, a new life. They will come in and go out and find pasture. And then this refers to the enemy of your soul, to the devil. He says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Listen to this. Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. That's good news. Then Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus says, the way I will give you my life will open the door for you to have life. The way you find life, true life, meaningful life, is to receive the life of Jesus. He says, my life for yours. That's why Jesus died on the cross, to give his life for your life, to give life to you. That's the heart of Jesus. That's the desire of Jesus, is to offer his life for you. And so he offers life, life, and life. So there's four kinds of life. First is the physical life you already have. If you're here, if you're breathing, if you're online, he get, and that was a gift from Jesus, thank you, Jesus, I'm alive. But there's more. So here's the next kind of life. Jesus brings spiritual life. He brings spiritual life, not just physical life. When Jesus meets this guy, this religious leader, kind of business leader, uh, he's actually on the Jewish Supreme Court of the ancient world, Jesus meets this guy, Nicodemus, and he tells him, Nicodemus, you need to be born again. You need new life. Not physical, spiritual. And Jesus says, flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. Jesus says, you already have physical life. That's great. I want to give you spiritual life. I want to wash you clean, take away your sins, give you a whole new life. Jesus offers a whole new life. Born again, spiritual life. But he doesn't stop there. He also offers abundant life. Abundant life. He says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Listen to what Jesus says. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Abundant life, overflowing life. More than you can imagine or dream in every way possible. Jesus says, I gave you physical life. You didn't even ask me. Just gave it to you. You're welcome. I'll give you spiritual life. Accept my forgiveness when I died on the cross. Take my hand, follow me, and I'll give you spiritual life but I will give you an abundant life, a life so full, so overflowing, it will just blow your mind. And you know what we have to do? We have to slow down and focus and appreciate God's goodness. If you're a follower of Jesus, if you're a Christian, you should be amazed and dazzled by God's goodness. For one thing, in Ephesians, you know what the Bible tells us? Through, through Jesus, you have every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Every spiritual blessing and all the heavenly realms are yours through faith in Jesus. That's amazing. We have the blessing of physical things that God provides, material goods. And sometimes we spend so much time focusing on the new thing we want, we forget all that God's given to us. We're so much about the upgrade and the new one, we forget, man, we're so blessed. And, and just spend a little time traveling the world, seeing how a lot of other people live, and you'll go, man, we are blessed. Lavish, abundance, in physical things, relationships, people, God's family, God's church. God says, I don't want to just give you physical life, but I'm going to give you spiritual life, and I'm going to give you an abundance of life. And, and here's the thing. When you have Jesus, here's what you realize. What Jesus gives me, the hope of Jesus, my friendship with him, cleansing of my sins, heaven forever with him, you're going, man, that's, that's my best Christmas gift ever. When I was 15 years old, I grew up in an atheistic home, no faith. I had never held a Bible or read a Bible before I became a Christian. I didn't like intellectually find my way to Jesus. I was a punk surf kid, grew up in Huntington Beach, self-centered, and somebody shared with me that there was a God who loved me, that Jesus died for me, and if I would receive him, he would wash me clean and give me new life. 
I remember my first prayer, I said, God, I don't know if you're even real, and I don't know if the stuff about Jesus is even true. But if you love me, and if you want me, and if you have life for me, I want you. And I have never been the same. About seven hours later, God called me to be a pastor. That, that's part of my, and God changed me. You don't have to have everything figured out. You just have to have a heart that surrenders to Jesus, and he'll take your hand and lead you through the rest. So he gives you physical life. If you receive it through Jesus, he'll give you spiritual life. He lavishes on you abundant life, and then Jesus brings eternal life. Bonus forever and ever and ever, and even after that, he says, heaven with me, glory and beauty and peace, every tear wiped away, every pain gone beyond your wildest imaginations, beyond your best day and your best moment. God said, I will lavish you with that forever and ever and ever. Jesus, I offer it all to you. That's the life Jesus offers. So here's my question. Have you received Jesus's three-time offer of life? I mean, he gave you your physical life. Be sure to thank him for that. But he says, but I offer you spiritual life, abundant life, and eternal life. But that part you have to accept. He doesn't force it on us. He offers it. He offers himself, his death on the cross, his resurrection, and his leadership. If you'll, if you'll ask for him to forgive you, take his hand and walk with him. He says, I will take your hand and lead you through all your life and for eternity. That's the invitation that Jesus gives. That's why Jesus came. So Jesus arrived in the incarnation. Jesus arrives in our lives when we ask him to, an inspiration of his presence, but also as we walk into the world, there, there's this, this illustration that when we walk into any room, Jesus comes with us, and the hope of life travels with Jesus' people. Everywhere you go, if you're a Christian, the life of Jesus is in you. So everywhere you go, you can bring the life of Jesus. Your story, how God's changed your life, how he's leading you, how you fall sometimes flat on your face, but he gets you back up again. He strengthens you, and you keep walking with him. You have a story to share that tells the, how the life of Jesus is changing your life. We're not perfect yet. We learned a couple weeks ago we're made holy through Jesus' sacrifice. But in this life, we're still stumbling and struggling, but we continue to follow Jesus. But as we do, the world can see that there's a new life in us and a light of Jesus that shines. And you can share that with the people around you. In John chapter 3, verse 16, when Jesus is having this conversation with Nicodemus, uh, this religious leader, we read that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Whoever, anyone who believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. And then if you look at John 14, verses six and seven, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him, and you've seen him. Why? Because we've seen Jesus. Jesus, I offer you this life. So life is for whoever, so share with whoever. Who, who's, who's eternal life for? Who does Jesus offer his life for? Whoever, whosoever. Who's that? Well, it's whosoever, anybody. It's up to us. See, he knocks. He doesn't kick the door in. He knocks. And he opens his arms. He says, if you come to me, I will come to you. I've already prepared the way. I've already paid the price. I've already died on the cross and risen again. I've done all that's needed. If you'll accept my relationship, my friendship, and walk with me, I will wash you clean and take your hand and lead you for all of your life. So if you're a Christian, whether you're online, gather with friends or family, or on your own, whether you're on the campus here, outdoors in the family, outdoors in the courtyard, the family worship venue, here in the worship center, wherever you are, if, if you have put your faith in Jesus, if you've taken his hand, man, this Christmas, rejoice. Whatever gifts, gifts you get or give or don't get, pale in comparison to this gift of Jesus. If you asked me, Kevin, you, would you take the gift of Jesus and his forgiveness and a friendship with him and his leadership in your life or every Christmas present, birthday present, and every present you can imagine combined, would you take all these gifts or would you take the gift of Jesus? Slam dunk, no question. 
Jesus every time. Because his life, his abundant life, his eternal life has transformed my life. And it's transformed many of your lives. If you know Jesus this Christmas season, rejoice. If you say, I don't know Jesus. I'm, I'm curious, I'm open, but I, I've, never, I've never received Jesus and asked him to forgive me. I want you to have a chance right now to do that. No pressure. You don't have to stand up and walk to the front. I'm gonna, we're going to offer a Bible for you if you want one afterwards on your way out. Or if you're online, we'll, we'll send it to you, we'll mail it to you. But I want to let you know, if you, if you say, man, I want to know the life of Jesus. I don't have it all figured out, but I want to know the life of Jesus. Here's, here's, here's what, it's, it's, it's so simple that, here, I mean, here's, here's the story. Here's the truth that we have to understand. It begins here. There is a God who made you, who knows everything about you, and he loves you. For God so loved the world. There is a God who made you, he knows you, and he loves you. He also knows that you have a problem. It's called sin. Every human being, we've thought thoughts we shouldn't think, we've said things we shouldn't say, we've done things we shouldn't do. We, we push back against God, we don't follow God's leading, and that sin separates us from God. So God loves us, he wants a relationship, he cares for us. We've sinned, we're separate, we can't get back to God. Who's gonna solve the problem? We can't, you know who does? God does. God's solution is Jesus. That's what Christmas is all about. Jesus came, God with us, he lived a life with no sin, no wrong, and then he died on the cross for our sins, for our punishment, for our shame, and he paid the price, and he died. They put him in a tomb, and three days later, he rose again. And he offers life to anyone who will take his hand and follow him, anyone, whosoever. There's a God who loves you. We're separate from God because of our sin. We can't get back home again. God came to rescue us, born in a manger, paid the price, rose again. The last part of that whole thing is this. We have to choose. We can receive the gift. It's up to us. And so I want to offer a prayer. If you want to, for the first time, pray and say, Jesus, I don't have it all figured out, but I want you. This Christmas, I want you, and I want to walk with you. I want to invite you to pray with me. Let's pray together. If you're a person who said, whether you're at home, <clears throat> online, or here on campus, and you say, I want the life of Jesus, would you tell, and pray, praying is just talking to God. So just quietly in your heart, say these words to him. Say, dear God, I don't have it all figured out and I don't have all the answers. But I want Jesus. I want spiritual life. I want abundant life. I want eternal life. So I confess all my wrongs and all my sins to Jesus. I put them at his feet and I accept Jesus, your forgiveness. I accept your love. I accept you washing me clean of all my wrongs. And Jesus, I'm going to take your hand right now and I'm going to follow you all the days of my life and forevermore. And if you prayed that prayer, if you prayed that prayer, God has done a work in your heart the angels of heaven are rejoicing and you are now a child of God. And if you're at home, online, I'm going to ask you to do one thing. On the screen right now, you're going to see a phone number and the word faith, F-A-I-T-H. Would you text the word faith to that number in the next minute or two? Just text the word faith. And we want to send you a Bible and a 50-day kind of gets you started reading guide and some next steps. We want to help you grow in that faith to take the hand of Jesus and follow him. If you're on campus here, all you need to do is when the service is over, go by the Connection Center. And my wife Sherry will be in there. And she wants to give you a Bible. we got a beautiful Bible to give you. And the reading plan and just some first steps as you grow in faith. Because we want to come alongside you and cheer you on and encourage you. So please don't leave here without going and picking up a Bible and saying hi to Sherry. Just say, I prayed that prayer with Pastor Kevin. Or text the word faith if you're at home to the number you see on the screen. I want to pray with those right now that are already Christians. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have given us life, that you breathed life into us. You gave us physical life. But Jesus, somewhere along the way, we came to this point where we understood that you give us spiritual life, an abundant life, an eternal life. And Jesus, this Christmas, we say thank you. Thank you that you are the life and you have given us life. Let us walk in that life. Light, life. Let us delight in the life you've given us and let us share this light and life, Jesus, that you've brought to us. Hear our hearts. Hear our prayers.